Okay, uh, this is going to be a follow-up to day six. Uh, I want to show the faster solution, even though the problem didn't really require it, uh, just because I think it's cool. Um, so, you know, this is the brute force solution that I talked about in my solution video. You know, works great. Uh, this is linear in the size of t, because we're just trying all the options. Um, if t was, you know, I don't know, a million times bigger, that would not work. Uh, so let's see something that is uh, logarithmic in the size of t, which is basically going to be binary search. Um, so we know that we're interested in this function, uh, x times t minus x. Um, it should be pretty intuitive that this function uh, is maximized at t over 2. So we want to know what is the lowest value such that uh, g and also what is the highest value, right? And then the answer will be basically the difference. Uh, so find the lowest value, we can do binary search. So the idea is we know that 0 doesn't work, and we know that t over 2 does work, hopefully, I guess. Uh, sure, I guess we should check for this, right? If the maximum possible value is less than d, then it's hopeless. Uh, otherwise, we know that sure. I'll just define this here. So we know that g of low is less than d, and g of high is greater than d. And we want to find a value, the first value in the middle. That's bigger than d. So, and we know it's somewhere in this interval. So we try the midpoint. Uh, and so the reason that the binary search works is it goes from being false, right? It goes from being less to being more. And so you can just cut in half to find the first place where that happens. So if g of m so look at the midpoint. If the midpoint is big enough, then we can replace high with the midpoint, and we still have an interval where low doesn't work and high does work. Uh, otherwise, we know that m doesn't work, and so we can say that low equals m. Uh, yeah. So that's the idea of binary search. Um, this is. I guess we can do this. Uh, right, so this doesn't necessarily terminate. Uh, so what am I doing on here? So if I... So we want to say uh, the first value that is bigger And say low equals n plus one. Um, if, it, if low is zero and high is one, then we're done. Sure. So I think we should have this. Uh, and we can assert g of first greater than equal to d, and g of first minus one is less than d. Right. So it truly is the first value. And now we can do something similar to find the last value. Uh, or we might be able to use the fact that it's symmetric. I think we can probably use the fact that it's symmetric. Uh, so last equals t over 2. So 
So this is like the distance out from the maximum. There you go. And this is probably also that. So we can assert that what we want. G of last and G of last plus one is less than D. And then the answer should just be, so last works and first works. So last minus first plus one. Uh, so let's see if that is right. And it is not. Uh, so this part was correct, and this part was not, which kind of makes sense because this part was, you know, being a little sloppy. So let's just print out what we have here, uh, and it was one too big. No, one too small. I guess that makes sense. How about that? Cool. Uh, so the point is, if t is odd, then t over 2 plus 1 is also a maximum. And so we should go out you know, one more from that to get the real last. And that appears to pass all our asserts, so it might be right. And this says 393120 and 3687265. Cool. Uh, yeah, so it's really nice to have all these asserts um, so that you know, you know, that what you think is going on is what's actually going on because it's not obvious from reading the code that that's true. Right, so again, we started with an interval where one of them was too low and one of them was big enough. And then we're trying to find the first thing that's big enough. Uh, Right, so maybe I can add another assert. So in this case, we know that uh, right, if the size of the interval is more than one, then we keep cutting it down in half. Once it is one, then we can't cut it anymore. And we know that uh, g of low is less than d, and g of high is greater than or equal to d. And so we know that the first thing, right, there are one apart, so we know that high is actually the first uh, first thing that's bigger than or equal to d. Right, this is just the same assert that we had up here, and that's uh, like the loop invariant, right? That's the thing that's true every time we're going through this for loop. Um, and, you know, we know it's true because we're just making sure, right? If it's big enough, then you just replace high, right? That's the same condition that we had on high. And otherwise, we know it's small, and we can replace low because that's the same condition that we have on low. And they're getting closer and closer together every time. Um, so, you know, this is the binary search. Uh, and then we do some, exploit the symmetry. We could do another binary search on the other side, but, you know, you can see it's shorter to just uh, exploit the symmetry. Um, right, because the point is, like, G is symmetric, right? G of x, maybe I'll write this, G of x equals G of t minus x. Uh, which is just very obvious from the definition of G. Um, so there's yeah. I guess the real maximum is at t over two. Here I'm doing like integer division, uh, which is why I have this ugly thing. So maybe actually I could write this, and then I could avoid this. I think this is correct. I'm not sure exactly if the rounding is going to work out for me. I guess it does. Okay, so that's even nicer, actually. That, like, shows you the symmetry more clearly. The maximum is exactly a t over 2, which doesn't, you know, could be uh, a half integer. It's not, you know, if t is odd. And then this is how far you can go and still be above d. And so it's also how far you can go and still be above d in the other direction, because it's symmetric. Uh, and, yeah, there's this many numbers in that interval. And that is that is it. So that is the sort of fancier solution, um, which runs you know infinitely faster. Uh, right? If I say multiply these both by a thousand, I still get the answer instantly. Whereas if I just ran the brute force, it would take a thousand times longer. Um, runs in log t 
key. Uh, but you can see it's a lot more complicated and there's a lot more you know chance of messing up. Uh, in particular, like getting this sort of termination condition right is, is pretty tricky. Uh, so it's nicer to just do the brute force because you know it's simpler to code up and it runs fast enough. But this is like the I don't know the fancy faster solution. Um, so yeah, hope that was interesting. See you tomorrow.